How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and growing up in the 80s, we had Pong and the Atari 2600, and of course all the arcades that we had uh, growing up in the 80s, arcade games um, in almost every store. And that's where I found a love for video games, but it wasn't until the NES came out that that became my biggest passion of all time. I'm the six of seven children growing up in a big old household, so to get away from the chaos, I could always turn to my NES. It was my escape from everything that was going on all around me. I'd get my one game for Christmas, my one game for birthday. And fortunately, I had friends back in the day who were going through the same thing I was going through, so we could trade games all the time, too. In fact, I have friends today because we traded Nintendo games way back in the day. And also, as a true testament of the time, when this thing came out, the NES Classic Edition, it was sold out day one. You couldn't find another one for, like, a year later. People were flipping this for, like, four times, five times the amount. There are still several people writing books about the subject. And best of all, believe it or not, People are still making video games for it. They're still making NES games for a system that came out in the mid-80s. How insane is that? Now, you've played the Marios, you've played the Castlevanias, you've played the Mega Mans, but with 678 games licensed here in the United States of America, and then even more overseas, uh, there's a lot of games that you may have missed out on. So in this video, I just wanted to showcase 20 games that you may have missed out on. If you loved Castlevania, I think you're gonna like Eight Eyes. Now, Eight Eyes kind of looks and feels a bit like Castlevania, even just by its presentation. What sets it apart is you get to choose which stage you want to go to right from the get-go, and you even have a Falcon Companion that can fly around and attack enemies. You can control it yourself, or if you're playing two-player, the second controller controls the Falcon, and it's a super fun experience. In fact, I don't even know if I can beat this game without having a second player. The enemies may not be the most creative, and the graphics may not be as crisp as Castlevania, but it still is a fun, fun experience. It has an addicting soundtrack too. Can't really explain it, but when you first hear it, you're just like, okay, there, there's the music, but you'll be humming it for weeks on end. Like Castlevania, it features items that you can pick up and utilize, and there might even be hidden stuff hidden inside the bricks. Super fun game, it's called Eight Eyes, you might want to check it out. Now if Mega Man is more your style, we have Creon Conquest. This game looks straight up like Mega Man, like reskinned. <laughs> but what's cool about this game, unlike Mega Man, is you start off with all of your upgrades. You start off with all of your items. And there's things like the ball that shoots at an angle so you can hit those hard to reach guys. You got an ice beam that can freeze enemies. You have a broom which can help you reach those hard to reach platforms. And again, I mean, as you can see here, if you like Mega Man, you're gonna dig Creon Conquest. Now yeah, we can find something cute for you. This is Kickle Cubicle. Kind of like Bubble Bobble, kind of, but not really. And admittedly, I like this game more than Bubble Bobble, if you can believe that. So you play this super cute guy, and you freeze the enemies, which turns them into ice cubes. You kick the ice cubes, and it makes these uh, platforms, which you can reach to get to these magic bags. I never really questioned what's in them. Anyway, you get all the bags, you move on to the next level. And it's one of those, like Bubble Bobble, there's like a hundred levels. And each one has different gimmicks and enemies that you have to worry about. To continue the story, one of these captive prisoners every once in a while will come up to you and start talking to you. That's, that's kind of cute. Huge fan of this game, super addicting. Kickle Cubicle, grab it now. There's a few Zelda clones for the NES, but I want to showcase Willow, which is also based on one of my favorite movies of all time. It's from Capcom, and it plays, well, a lot like Legend of Zelda. Has an overhead view, you can walk around and get upgrades and get experience points to move on to next levels and get stronger. One of the mechanics I thought was cool for its time was, like, if you're not at a good experience level, you swing your sword slow, but then when you get to the next level, you swing it a lot faster. Kind of makes sense, really, when you think about it. Again, I was a huge fan of the movie, so I was super excited to play this game, and I was not disappointed. Definitely one of my favorite video games based on movies, for sure. Even though this game's story isn't a lot like the movie, but there's a lot of similarities in it, so I think it'll be all right. Well, that's based on Zelda 1, but what about Zelda 2? Well, for that, we have Faxanadu. Well, it was originally supposed to be Fazanadu because it's a Famicom version of Xanadu, but never mind. Let's call it Faxanadu. There's an X in there. I know, I'm probably being insensitive about it, but still. Uh, seriously, one of my favorite NES games. Love the graphics, love the music. One thing I really liked about this, unlike other NES games, was if you put on armor or if you put on a, you know, a new sword, your graphic shows that. It doesn't just change the color or just say, like, it assumes it's like, oh yeah, you you're wearing it, even though you can't tell you're wearing it. In this game, you can see that you're wearing it or wielding it. And like Zelda 2, you attack the enemies, you get your gold, you buy the upgrades, you can use magic if you'd like. I mean, the story isn't super exciting. You're trying to save a dying tree. <laughs> but... <laughs> but it's still definitely worth the, the playthrough, for sure. I, I, I just love this game. I try to beat this game about once every other year or so. 
If you loved Batman, you'll love Kabuki Quantum Fighter, of all games. Now, you jump inside a computer to uh, attack the virus, and by doing so, you're turned into a Kabuki? Well, plus one on the uh, creative storyline, I suppose, but it's kind of cool because you play as this Kabuki guy, and then headbanging and whipping people with your hair is your primary attack. So you gotta love that, right? You can also get other little things that you can shoot out, like these little chips. <laughs> But other than that, yeah, it plays a lot like uh, Batman for the NES. So if you like Batman for the NES, I think you'll like this. And again, you headbang for your weapon. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if you love Grand Theft Auto, you're going to love Dick Tracy. Bear with me on this one. Okay, so it's, maybe it's not exactly like Grand Theft Auto, but <laughs> but check this out all the same. So you have your assignment. you got to find out uh, who's causing what. And by doing so, you gotta interrogate some fools. So it kind of tells you where you need to go. So you drive there. And there's enemies on the road every once in a while or shooting at you. You get to where you need to go, and then you gotta fight your way through uh, the warehouse, or the house, or the flop house in this case, or wherever, wherever the place you're going to, there's always gonna be some fools there to fight. Kind of a cool idea, if they're not shooting at you, you can't shoot them. If you shoot them and they're unarmed, then you lose life. Because that's not very honorable. However, if they're shooting at you, go ahead and plug them away, right? As you get to where you're going, you can talk to the guy, and then he might tell you where else to go. And then from there, you keep going until you find out who's causing what. And there's a few levels in this game, so I was, this is a fun one for me. I liked the fact that you could drive around and then go inside buildings and stuff like that, so... You want to check out Dick Tracy if you can. This was a late release title called Cowboy Kid, and this game is a super fun two-player game that not a lot of people are talking about. A little harder to find on the NES now because it's one of those late release games, but super, super awesome. You become the new sheriff, so you run around and start attacking people, kind of like Legend of the Mystical Ninja for the Super Nintendo, or inspired by the Goemon games for the Famicom. This game has everything going on for it, and again, it's just one of those games that nobody is talking about. Awesome two-player game, fun experience. It's Cowboy Kid. Find it if you can. And if cowboys are your thing, here's a game called The Lone Ranger. Well, it's based on, of course, The Lone Ranger, another later release game from Konami. And this game plays like an awesome Konami game. But again, it came out later on, so not a lot of people had a chance to play it. I mean, you're the Lone Ranger, you gotta go around and kill the bad guys, I suppose. And you go into these towns, you can talk to people, and you find out what's going on, and you get, again, upgrades. I mean, just, it's like most other Nintendo games for the time. And this, again, another one of the games has everything going on for it, not a lot of people are talking about it. When you play this game, you're just like, oh yeah, this is this is classic NES, this is classic Konami for sure. If cowboys aren't your thing, we have ninjas in Wrath of the Black Manta, who is taking every precaution during this COVID-19 pandemic. Now you have a few secret ninja moves, and these get upgraded along the way, which I think is kind of fun. You can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to use for different levels. The storyline, eh, kind of generic. Somebody kidnapped the kids, you gotta rescue them. It plays a lot like Shinobi from Sega, but this game has its own personality too, where you can go inside these buildings, again, rescue the kids, uh, you can find um, upgrades or, you know, better stuff for you. It has these little Ninja Gaiden style cinematic cutscenes along the way. Wrath of the Black Manta might be worth checking out. Now, A Boy and His Blob will not win best graphics of any Nintendo game anytime soon, but this game is super fun. It's from David Crane, the guy who brought us Pitfall. You play the role of a boy with his anamorphic blob, and by feeding him different jelly beans, he transforms into different tools that you need to get through where you're going through. Now, most of the game takes place underground, but you do finally get yourself above ground into like another world and all that too. The creativity of just like, well, what jelly bean does what? And once you figure that out, it's how you play the game. And there's no one way to get through this whole uh, cavern. You can take the long way and get more items, you can take the quick way and just get through the end as quick as possible, but not have as many things at the end of the game. I mean, it's all up to you how you play this game. I had a lot of fun with the Boyna's Blob. Dragon Fighter is another one of those games that's like harder to find, and when you do find it, you're like, man, how did I wait so long to play this game? It plays like it looks. You just, you know, dodge the enemy attacks, attack the enemy, <laughs> move on. Great graphics. Super hard, super difficult game. If you're looking for a challenge, you're gonna find it in Dragon Fighter. The gimmick behind Dragon Fighter is after you attack so many enemies and you get your meter filled up, you turn into a dragon. And this makes it so much easier. Now when you're a dragon, it's a lot easier. When you're not a dragon, ah, uh, pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Fighter's a fun one, check it out. And if you can't get enough of dragons, you got Dragon Strike. This is one of those AD&D games, but doesn't play like the other AD&D games. It plays kind of like, ah, oh, this is gonna be kind of weird. Remember those games like Jungle Strike and Desert Strike? Kind of like that, kind of? 
I mean, you can fly around this whole map, and there's enemies on the ground and enemies above, and you can go up and down between uh, platforms or levels, I suppose, to attack the different enemies. And that's how you play Dragon Strike, and it's just a fun experience. If you like dragons, you gotta check out Dragon Strike for sure. Gonna take it all the way back with City Connection. I am somehow oddly addicted to City Connection. It came out in the arcade as well, but this is the NES version. I played more of this than anything. Back in the day, I had an old game for the ColecoVision called Minor 2049er, and it plays like that of all things, because it has the level, the platform, and as you drive on it in this game, um, it fills in. And to beat the level, you have to fill in the entire platforms, like all of them. You have enemies along the way, you can throw your cans at them and bop them out of the way. There's cats that show up randomly that you gotta jump over or avoid. You don't wanna hit the cat, for sure. I mean, at its core, I would consider this a puzzle game, but it's still just super fun, and I just can't get enough of it. It's City Connection, and shouldn't be hard to find. This one's a pretty cheap one. I have a lot of fond memories with Cobra Command. Not the Cobra Command you're thinking. <laughs> but this one plays kind of like an adventure game with upgrades and everything. So you play the role of this helicopter, and as you're attacking the enemies, you gotta rescue your dudes. So when you get close to them, you can drop down your rope, or maybe later on a ladder. You have to find your enemy bases. These are these uh, secret bases that you'll find throughout the levels. And down here you'll find even more guys to defeat. And cool enough, you can land on the enemy weapon depot and grab their upgrades. So you'll get you know better missiles, you know more armor, you know fly faster, stuff like that. Down here you kind of have your bosses, and then this is where you have like a bunch of uh, your guys that you can save. And it just kind of repeats that through the rest of the game, and it's just a super, super fun game. I love games like this. For the NES, these were like my favorite style, where, you know, you start off and you can get weapon upgrades along the way, and, you know, I, I just, I love this game. It's Cobra Command. Check it out. And for rescuing your people is your thing, we have Rescue, <laughs> the Embassy Mission. I like this game because it has a bunch of different gameplay elements in this one game. The start of it is you have to sneak to your kind of point... There's these spotlights. As soon as the spotlight hits you, then the, the machine guns start flying and you might get hit. Maybe you don't. But you have to like sneak your way through by hiding in these things or jump in the bushes or hop in the window. <laughs> when you get to your point, then the other guy will go through. There's three of them. And if one of your guys dies along the way, you can still go through it. You just won't get as good of a score at the end of the game. The next part of the game is using your sniper rifle. And I loved this part of the game. You just look through the windows and if you see like an enemy shadow, you shoot it. And that's one less enemy you have to fight when you jump inside this building. The next part, you gotta tether down and jump through the window. Don't lose your grip. And once you're inside, it turns into a first person shooter where you just gotta go through, rescue the hostages, kill the bad guys, and once all the bad guys are killed, then that's the end of the level. And there's multiple levels and difficulties you can choose from. So I, did, I didn't do as well as I could have on this round, but I'll do better next time. NES games don't get much more creative than Monster Party. You play a boy with a bat, you can hit the enemies with your bat, you can hit their bullets with your bat and uh, have them ricochet back to them and kill them. I thought that was like one of the coolest ideas ever. This game features like really crazy, kind of creepy graphics sometimes. And what makes this game the best for me is just the creative bosses. All of the bosses in this game are just fun and creative and uh, it, it was cool to see what boss is coming up next. You never knew. Oh yeah, and every once in a while you can also turn into this uh, dragon friend. <laughs> because because it's an NES game, that's the way it is. <laughs> Monster Party is one of my absolute favorites. This is one of those, man, I hope a lot of people have played this game, but if not, this is Jackal from Konami. This is another one of those classic NES, classic Konami. Shoot the bad guys. Bomb the shelters, rescue your friends. A lot like that Cobra Command I was just talking about a little bit ago. Get your people through the helicopter. Now, if, it didn't, if I didn't get shot along the way, I would have had people that got out, but in this playthrough, <laughs> I wasn't so lucky. Just make your way to the end of the level and then move on to the next. It's Jackal, and it's super fun, and two-player on this one, too. I have a love-hate relationship with Cobra Triangle. I love just about everything there is to know about Cobra Triangle, but I suck at it. So the more I play it, the more frustrated I get, just because I'm not very good at it, but it's still super, super, super fun. It's not a boat racing game. I mean, you can attack the other boats, you get your upgrades, much like a Gradius, and then every level is different, too. Like, one of them might be a race, but then the other level might be um, you have to rescue the people who are drowning. I mean, it's just, a, it's a creative, fun game, and you're always looking forward to seeing what the next level is going to be like. Rare made some awesome, awesome, awesome games for the NES, and this is uh, one of the best for sure.
Conquest of the Crystal Palace is a staple NES game as far as everything that it has going for it. Awesome graphics, awesome music, it's a platformer, and I mean, it's just fun. It plays like every NES game should play. Takes place in a cool area. Again, can't get over how awesome the music is. You can buy items to strengthen yourself and whatnot. It's a good one, and it's Conquest of the Crystal Palace. Next up, we have Codename Viper, the Nintendo game where the person doesn't wear pants. Well, I mean, <laughs> he is wearing pants. It's just your NES palette is limited, so the skin tone of his face is the, is the same color of his pants. <laughs> you can only have three colors per pixel block. If you ever played Rolling Thunder, this plays like Rolling Thunder. I mean, it's straight up Rolling Thunder. Two hits and you're dead kill the bad guys, go inside these little areas, you can either rescue the people, sometimes there's weapons behind them. You got your jump, you can jump up vertically and, you know, go to the upper platforms. I mean, again, straight up a Rolling Thunder clone, but it's from Konami, and it's awesome. And it's Codename Viper. Now, I know I left a bunch of games off this list, games that you're thinking about, so make sure you let me know what those are in the comments below. If you dig this style of video, I've done a few other ones from other systems, and I'll do another one of these ones for the NES sooner than later. Make sure you're subscribed, consider being a Patreon, it truly helps out the channel and helps me do these kind of videos, and I will see you again very soon.